Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to pick up from where we were previously. We've just implemented our obstacle class. So we'll now add the spawner so that we can start adding these to the world and having some interaction with the obstacles. Now we've obviously left a few things unfinished. So we have some empty functions in the level manager and the player class, but it won't really make sense to implement those until we have the obstacles actually spawning in the world and moving and everything. So we're gonna get this out of the way first and then we'll go back in the next video and clean up everything and hopefully get things interacting with each other by then. So to begin, if we navigate to our spawners folder, we're gonna to go to the BP spawner base and we want to create a class from this one. So the base class, we're gonna create a child of this. And we're gonna call this one the BP underscore spawner obstacle. Okay, so in the obstacle class, all we really want to do is we're gonna leave the default scene route again, just so that we have something to grab and look at when we drag it into the world. We're gonna go first to the uh, the event graph. There's nothing we actually need to do in the construction script. We have that ready in the child class if we're to do anything, or the parent class, sorry. Now, in the event graph, we don't actually need a parent call on this uh, because we've removed the event begin play completely from the parent class. So we can do a similar thing down here. We'll just get rid of these for now and do our initial logic off of the event begin play. Now, quite simply, what we want to do first of all is get our reference to the level manager. So we'll get the level manager. We're gonna use our BPF uh, library function again. We'll do a branch check off of this, so just to keep that kind of safety in mind. And of course, only if this returns true, so if it indeed does find a level manager, then we'll pull off of this and we'll promote this to a variable. We're gonna call this variable the level manager ref, and we'll plug this to the true pin. Okay, we're gonna create another function just below this. I'm gonna do this in the event graph because rather than using timelines, this is gonna be quite simple and we may as well just uh, use this with a delay uh, as it will just save a little bit of time programming. So we'll create a custom event and I'm just gonna call this line up next obstacle spawn. So this is basically just going to be a brief delay. Uh, we're gonna make this random. This will be slightly flawed, but again, this is gonna be something very easy to fix and implement the logic as you need for the kind of patterns that you want to create in your endless runner. But this is just gonna give a very simple kind of uh, demonstration of one way that it can be done. So first thing we want to do is add a delay and this delay is going to be a random float in range. So we'll get the random float in range here. And I'm just gonna promote both of these to a variable. And I'm not actually gonna fill these in. These are gonna be public variables that we'll be setting on the obstacle spawner actually in the level. So we'll right click on this one. I'll call this one min delay. I'm just gonna make this one public. So we add the uh, the eye here so that we can see this in the world. I'm gonna control W to copy this and I'll call this one max delay. And I've just done it that way so that this one's already public and we can just drag this in and connect it to the maximum value. Okay, so when this is done, there's we're gonna call the next function, but before we go and do that, we're just gonna go back up here and call that new uh, custom event that we've just made. So we'll call the line up next obstacle. And that's gonna be the first thing we do when we begin play is that we're gonna wait for a certain amount of time, see if we can spawn something and spawn our obstacle in. So now we actually need to spawn the obstacle. So off of this, I'm gonna nest this one inside of another function, and I'm gonna call this one uh, place obstacle. We've made this function so that we know specifically this is the obstacle class, but uh, all we're gonna really be doing is we're gonna be using the parent class again. So we're going to override our spawn actor function that we have there. And what we want to do is inside of this, we're going to spawn the actor. So make sure that this is the parent class call. So we can say that's from BP spawner obstacle and we'll loop back around to call this function here. So again, this is just gonna be uh, spawning the obstacle that we've placed in the public variable inside of the editor. And when we have the obstacle ready to work with, we're gonna pull off of this and we're gonna set the actor location. So the actor location, we just want to make this the current location of the spawner. So we're gonna say get actor location and we'll plug that in to our variable just here. Okay, so if we now return back to our event graph, obviously when we have our variables are met, so the delay's been met, we've spawned something in, uh, we, or we actually want to spawn this in now, so we're gonna say uh, place obstacle. The next thing we want to do is we're gonna get our reference to the level manager, and um, there's a Boolean that we want to have in this class. So if we go back there, we haven't made this yet, we're gonna to go to our level manager, we're going to create a new variable, and we'll call this one B is playing. So at some point we're gonna come back and we're just going to keep track of whether or not the uh, the game is still active basically. So whether or not you've hit something, hit an obstacle or uh, completed a level goal, if you have those. 
uh, then we're going to check this and obviously we don't want to spawn any more obstacles whilst uh, the level isn't playing anymore uh, or when you've got a game over. So we're going to pull off of this and we'll get the is playing and obviously pull from here and get a branch check. And if this is true, then all we want to do is quite simply line up the next obstacle again. So it's going to come back in to this loop, wait a certain amount of time, a new random variable, and then place another obstacle. So we'll line up next obstacle, and that is pretty much the spawning logic done for now. The final thing that we can do whilst we're in here, again, we can override another function, and that's going to be our uh, spawned actor hit event. So we're going to get this here. This should appear in the event graph. And quite simply, all we want to do, a lot more simple, uh, much simpler than the floor spawner where we were moving that around and getting to the end of the previous floor and stuff. Uh, quite simply, we're just going to say destroy the obstacle. So destroy actor. Okay, so I'm going to call the destroy actor and that is pretty much everything. So now every time an obstacle hits the end world, because we don't necessarily know when or where we want to place the new obstacle, we're just going to destroy the one which has gone out of bounds uh, and create a completely new one. Now ideally, uh, you would look at using something like object pooling or at the very least uh, recycling kind of like I did with the floor so you don't have so much creating and destroying of objects being made. Uh, that's a little bit more in depth than I wanted to go in this tutorial series. I might do an extra at some point and add that in uh, but definitely worth looking into object pooling just so that you don't have to keep doing the create and destroy calls because they can get a little bit heavy especially if you're doing a lot of things very quickly. Something like this should probably be okay because we've only got maybe three or four things spawning at any one time. It's not going to add a big overhead uh, and of course there is the um, garbage collection being done on all U objects or Unreal objects behind the scenes anyway. So with that done, I've just hit uh, compile. We'll compile and save this, see what is happening here. Uh, so this is just because I've not compiled and saved in the level manager. Uh, with that done, we'll just compile and save again and the error should go away there. And then if we go back to the main window, we can place this in and we can start seeing some obstacles actually being spawned in our levels. Okay, so quite simply, I'm gonna get the obstacle, uh, the obstacle spawner even, and we'll pull this in. Now the first one, I'm gonna name the obstacle spawner left. So I'm just going to rename this, leave everything else as it is, and just add left to the end of the name. And this one on the x-axis, this is going to be uh, quite far ahead of the player. So I think I had a value of about 2,600. So we'll make that quite far off in the distance to make sure that you have time for the player to get used to uh, a little bit of movement and seeing the, the level kind of come towards you before the first obstacles appear. And on the y-axis, this is going to be the, uh, the bit which makes it the left object. We're going to make this... Uh, minus 250 which is obviously the value of our current left lane uh, and that's based on the distance that you move in the level manager so our lane width is 250. I'm going to do a control W on this and I'm going to call this one the spawner obstacle uh, middle and of course this is going to be in the middle so we're just going to make this uh, zero on the y-axis and for the x-axis on this one I'm going to push this back a little bit further again so the idea being is that I just staggered this a little bit so hopefully they won't uh, necessarily spawn in a line with each other this isn't 100% foolproof like I mentioned you to make a, a very robust kind of endless runner you're going to have to look into exact object placements and things you can always just line trace uh, next to the obstacles and move them if you find that something is directly next to another obstacle but uh, doing it this way I find it's very very rare that you actually get any issue of this and the final thing we're going to do is again just control w this one more time I'm going to call this one the spawner and then end this with right I'm going to move this to the y-axis of positive 250 and then we're just going to move this back maybe 2500 so slightly ahead of the one on the left much further ahead than the one on the middle and then if we press play, we should find that, um, of course, with delays, you actually have to have a value in there. So if we give a minimum and a maximum, uh, for the one on the left, I'm going to give this a minimum delay of two, a maximum delay of five seconds. And of course, we also need to add our obstacle. So we're going to go in, get the spawn actor type, which is going to be our obstacle. Um, and the actors required we're not going to use this this is just a leftover from the base class and we can leave this because it's going to be constantly spawning them anyway so do the same again for the uh, the next two and this is another thing i did give slightly different variables to each of these so the minimum delay i had for the middle row was uh, three and a maximum of six and of course the same obstacle type and then one last time for the right side i think i made this one a bit smaller so i'm going to give this a minimum delay of one a maximum delay of four and again, just give this the correct class. And now if we hit play, we should not have any of those errors. We should, after a while, 
see that the obstacles are being spawned in. Now, another thing that we're going to do as we go through this, we will be um, changing the angle of the camera and things so that we won't be able to see everything popping in and uh, being removed. But that's all going to come in kind of the tidy up and polish. Now, the one thing I think I did notice happening there is that we didn't have any new obstacles being spawned. It could be as though they're not being removed or there's some flaw in the logic that I've missed. So I'm just going to uh, pop out of this and see what's happening. So they're definitely being removed. So it's the lineup of the next obstacle, which I guess is not being called. Or maybe the level manager, in fact, is set by default to be not playing. So it's doing it once. Um, as I was talking, I could kind of see what was happening there. We can see that we've got this lined up once, so it's spawning the first one. It was then checking whether or not we're playing. That defaulted to be a false boolean, so it's just never resetting this. So now if we come back in, we'll try this again. We should see more than three of these obstacles. There we go. So we've got multiple different obstacles being spawned. Uh, it looks a little bit jumpy, like I said. You're not going to see all of that because we will be angling the camera and stuff in later videos. I'm going to leave that one here for today, though. As always, if you've enjoyed these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.